All right, here we go. And uh, this is an interview with uh, Adam Force from Change Creator Magazine. Here we go. Three, two, one. How do you build a business for social good? It's not just enough to start a business, but how do you then actually go out there and make positive change and have a huge impact in the world? How do we build a business for social good? How do we solve the world's social and environmental problems? If you're looking to do something meaningful as an entrepreneur, if you've got this burning desire to impact lives, then this is the episode for you because you can start a business and you can impact thousands, millions of lives. Whether that's through environmental change, whether it's through social change. I don't know how much McDonald's and Burger King and Taco Bell are changing the world. I mean, maybe they are. And certainly they give to foundations, but I'm talking about building a business where you can provide clean water to, to the world's populations where there is none, where you can impact the environment, where you can help underprivileged children, whatever it is, whatever your motivation. And on today's episode, you're going to learn a few little steps on how you can earn a highly profitable living while also positively impacting the world. You're going to learn how to take that brilliant idea you have that you just don't know how to bring to life and turn it into life, make a living and make a difference. To help us do that, I've brought in the founder of Change Creator Magazine, which is designed to push mindful business. His name is Adam Force, and he's joining us now from South Florida. Adam, how are you, mate? Good. How are you doing, James? Appreciate you having me on here. Great to have you, Adam. Just tell us a little bit about you and your Change Creator magazine. Yeah, so, you know, you know, as we're all kind of watching the news here, there's just um, a lot of challenges that can frustrate people, like you mentioned. Um, it could be simple things in local community. It could be global things that are big and overwhelming. But, um, you know, there is a shift. There's a shift in mentality that's taking place that I think is important to acknowledge and even nurture. Um, and as you look at the younger generations, you're going to find that um, they are more interested in buying products from companies that are responsible. They have sustainable product lines um, or they're supporting causes. Um, and they're interested in pursuing those types of businesses themselves as well. Um, so this, you can see in those habits and these things, the way that they're approaching these things, that there's a change in behavior. Um, and a lot of people are looking for more meaning. So even the younger generation is feeling um, more inclined to only take on work that aligns to their values. Um, there's that sense of fulfillment. Um, you know, I've spoken to people like Yannick Silver. He's a real well-established marketing guy and he had all the money, he had the businesses, but there was just that one thing missing. And it comes down to, you know, what's my legacy? <laughs> you know, like, what is that? What is, there's no sense of fulfillment. So change creator really is, is me looking at those things and, and having that, going through the story myself. Um, you know, I, I went on a trip, I had an epiphany, I came back and I was all about social entrepreneurship because that approach to business made sense to me. Um, and as I started playing in that area, this is maybe five or six years ago, there was no information about how to become, how do you make money doing these things? You know, I have no idea. I know how to become a doctor. I know how to become a lawyer, but how do you do what Scott Harrison's doing and, and give people clean water, but actually make a living doing it at the same time? I had no idea. This is a very unlinear path, right? So long story short, there was a gap in the market. And I always say that, you know, I love Forbes, Forbes magazine. I love Inc. magazine. And they do really good work for economic entrepreneurship or uh, commercial entrepreneurship, whatever you want to call it. But there is nobody out there making social entrepreneurship as cool as they make economic entrepreneurship. And so I was like, well, hey, let's, I, I, I was listening to a podcast and boom, I heard this someone who hadn't having success with a digital magazine. 
And rather than me trying to create hemp water bottles and, um, you know, be rain, a rainforest advocate, I decided this was in my wheelhouse. And one thing I learned is it's really important to use the skills you have and acknowledge what your values are and then find a way to leverage those things. And for me, I know publishing, I know design, I know user experience. So, hey, I started building this magazine because now I can say we are the first digital magazine app for social entrepreneurs. And so I'll pause there, but that, that's the story of how that happens. <laughs> so w w what are a few examples then of, you mentioned um, uh, Mindful Water, I think it was. Um, what, what are a few examples of companies that are successfully uh, doing the very thing that you and your magazine really promotes, which is pushing mindful business. What are, what are a few big examples? Yeah, I think one company um, is a great example is D light. Mm -hmm. um, and I just interviewed uh, one of the co-founders, Ned, and he and his partner were, they went to, um, geez, was it Stanford or Harvard uh, for this class for social innovation product design. Right. And they met there. And there is this huge hole in the world where people don't have electricity. I mean, who would think, right? Such a, such a thing that we walk around every day and take for granted. But there are people whose kids can't study because they don't have electricity. They're working towards candles or they're using kerosene, which causes um, crazy hazards or health issues and all kinds of other problems that stem from that. Um, and they came up with very affordable products that people can bring into their homes using solar. And now they have a whole product line, all kinds of things. And they're very small, simple. They have large, um, you know, complete household type uh, products. Um, so long story short, I forget the numbers, but they have now impacted, I think, 65 million plus people, which is staggering. Wow. And it was just there. They're, they were really inspired by the problem, right? Because they wanted to fix something that really, you get frustrated, right? Sometimes frustration could be a form of motivation. Um, and so they tackled this problem, they built this uh, product, and they're literally changing lives. They're, they're helping the health of the families. They're giving kids more opportunity to be educated. Um, so the list goes on and you can check them out. It's d.light and their website is, has all kinds of Impressive stats and stuff, which I, I don't remember off the top of my head besides that 65 million. Um, I'll give you another example. I interviewed um, uh, Dr. Alastair Harris. Okay, He's on our sixth uh, release of the magazine, and he's on the front cover. He mm -hmm. is a social entrepreneur awardee through the Skoll Foundation, and I believe that was 2016. I can't remember if it was 2015 or 16. Um, but his story is incredible. He studied marine biology. He loves coral reefs. But at some point, he was leaving college, and he had to decide. Literally, I'm at a, he's at a crossroads saying, do I go down the corporate path? I, I have a job lined up, and I could take this job, make good money. Or do I want to follow my my heart and do something in you know marine biology and coral reefs? And he decided to go down that road, of course. And long story short, he's been working a lot in Madagascar, up the coastlines there. And these people were knowingly, because they didn't know how to, how to address this otherwise, but they were uh, overfishing the area. And it's probably an area where most of the fish, a lot of the fish around the world comes from, okay? And so they're overfishing because they have to put food on the table, you know? Um, they know the environment very well, but they didn't have solutions to... Um, what do you call it? Replenish the fish populations. Okay. So he went in there and he had to say, all right, I got to take off my, he, I mean, we called his article, the reluctant on social entrepreneur, because he didn't want to become a businessman, but he had to put his businessman hat on, right? So that he could say, I got to make money uh, in order to execute the conservation efforts. Right. And so he not only figured out a way to support and replenish the fishery areas. Um, the people thought he was crazy. Then he did one beta test. He proved that it worked. And then everybody up the coastline started copying him. So that's the scale, right? He scaled right. up the coastline. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, he had to figure out a way to fund it. And people started writing him checks to go and see the areas he was working and what he was doing. And so then it became an ecotourism opportunity. 
And now you can go there today to some of the most beautiful areas around the world and you could participate in what he's doing, hang out on the beaches, do collect some data, go scuba diving, like all this, all this crazy stuff. Um, but it also gave work to the local community as well as another um, uh, source of income. So now he's helping the community, not only with the fish, but also with other sources of income. So it became this whole big system that he put in place that's now scaling up the coastline. Um, wow, okay. Yeah. And so do people, do people who do this, who create these movements and create these businesses and they impact millions of lives, do they themselves become very wealthy or very rich? And, and, and is that what we want? Because if they're wealthy, if they're becoming wealthy and rich from the business, then obviously the world is impacting that. Because I know pe a lot of people who do, who spend a lot of time in charities and I know a lot of them are broke a lot of, a lot, you know, <laughs> It's amazing. Like they're out there and they're, they're, they're giving so much service to local communities and feeding the homeless, but they're also just really struggling financially. So these, these people that you mentioned, are they, be, are they themselves becoming rich and, and wealthy while doing these charitable exercises? Well, I don't know how much money they have in their, their bank account, <laughs> but you know, if you are impacting 65 million plus people, I have to imagine your sales are pretty good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, as far as Dr. Alistair Harris, I mean, you pay per eco tourist, it's you know, a couple thousand dollars and they are jam packed all year round. So are they becoming rich? I'm going to say yes. Yes, they're rich because they're waking up every day doing what they love to do. They're rich because they go to sleep at night knowing that they're helping people and there's that great sense of fulfillment. And they were intelligent enough to build in money, understanding that it's very important as part of the, the model for anything you do, whether you're doing a social business or an economic approach um, to entrepreneurship. Um, so yeah, the money has to be there or the lights go off. Um, I, I think when I say they're rich, it's not just about money. To, the, to me, it's about scaling actual social impact. If you scale, rather than thinking I'm scaling the organization, you scale the impact. And the more you scale the impact, um, the more the, your, your plan where you have that money baked into your business model is going to come back to you, right? So I think that they're doing pretty darn good because they're scaling their impact a lot. I, I would wonder at, at the point where you're making a massive impact and you're feeling rich, like you said, in your, yeah. in your social change and you're rich, feeling rich because you're changing the world. I would wonder how... how as a business person or entrepreneur, then you would actually make, make a choice or make a decision on how much to pay yourself, whether it be a salary or whether it be shares or whether it be an exit strategy, because a lot of people, you know, when they, they start businesses uh, and they're entrepreneurs, they've got a five year exit strategy in mind where they would, you know, sell to a company and cash out and, and maybe go and change the world like these people are doing. So do you have any insight into, into what's going on there? And I asked the question, not because I'm some money grabbing person who's like so interested in, you know, pushing my, my own agenda, but I know that people, one of the reservations I'm sure that people have from starting a social change business is, well, how is it? Yes. I want to change the world, but how will it impact me? How, how much money can I make? How can that affect my financial future? Not just my, all around feeling of, of changing the world and impacting lives. And, and yes, I'm rich in that, but my own finances, my own wealth creation. So do you have any insight into, you know, what people have shared with you on that? Um, no particular. So I guess my response there would be um, most of these people are not doing what they're doing for the money. Um, not to say they don't want to make money, right? They'll have their school debt to pay off just like other people coming out of college. Um, you know, we've all, we all go down that road, uh, unfortunately. It's a typical path. <laughs> um, but I think that what they do is they just find a way to whatever is burning inside them, right? If you're passionate about the marine biology or they're, you're um, you know, helping kids who don't have shoes or whatever it is, um, that problem is so important to you that you're just looking to find ways to make money so that you can keep addressing that problem. And that includes making sure your lifestyle is paid for. 
So I think it starts at the, the onset. So when you're getting uh, into, it's like a mindset, right? Just like everything else, meaning what is success to you? And you have to start defining that at the get go. What am I looking to accomplish with this business? What does it look like? What's the business look like? Where does the money come from? And what is going to be success to me? Uh, so, you know, if I impact this many people and I sell this product, how much money do I make and how much do I want to come? So I think it's up to you to arrange and organize and plan from the start what success looks like and then go and make that vision come to life. And, you know, when I say that money is not the most important thing, it's not the driving force. It's important to amplify what you're trying to do and support the mission. But money is not the mission. Right. So I, I think there's an important mindset shift that people have to have if they're going to do a social impact business, because, yes, money is important, but there's a difference in behavior and action and result If you start a business just because money, money is the mission. I'm out to make money. You're going to do just like a big, a lot of big corporations, anything it takes to raise the bottom line which means sacrificing environment or sacrificing well-being, thinking of yourself and the business always first and not what the people around you, that 360 view, right? So it is a mindset shift. And if you're thinking about, damn, this problem, I, 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 gotta, I just can't sleep at night. It drives me nuts that these kids don't have water and I'm going to go figure this out. You're going to behave very differently with that motivation as your mission. Then you're going to say, I need – millions of dollars so that I can make this thing scale and I can change all these lives. And yes, you take your fair share, of course. We're talking to Adam Force, who's the founder of Change Creator Magazine. You can check it out, Change Creator Mag. What's the website for Change Creator, Adam? Uh, changecreatormag.com. Great. So check out changecreatormag.com. So how does the listener or the viewer right now get started then? Let's just say they've got an idea. What should they do to try and implement this idea for social change and, and try to impact millions of lives? Yeah, I mean, if they already have an idea, I think the first thing you have to do is start mapping it out. So you're going to have to start understanding what the business looks like. Um, how is it going to work? Um, you know, what are the things you need to consider and how are you going to make money? So really, to me, it's getting down, what is your dream? Um, and what is that mission, okay? And once you understand foundationally the vision, like you can get clarity on a vision, um, you can start taking the steps necessary to bring that vision to life. Um, and when you have an, an early idea, depending if it's a physical product or a service, um, you wanna talk to people that, that you, as a hypothesis, would actually believe are going to be your customers. Um, and I love what Michael Gerber talks about. He's like, you should start your business always with in mind, whether this is the intention or not, that you're going to sell it. The business is a product, okay? And you have to build the business so that it's efficient and it can be sold as a product. But at the same time, your second important customer is the actual person who will most benefit from what you offer. Um, and you want to go out and talk to those people who do you, you know, and get feedback. In other words, we're trying to find product market fit. Then you're just going to have to start taking steps to test it, low cost, bootstrapping. Um, so I think um, for me, it is a matter of getting clarity and putting everything down on paper, understanding where you're going. It's your map, right? It's like you don't want to play darts without a dartboard. Otherwise, it's just pointless. Um, if you don't know where you're going, you can't get there, <laughs> right? So um, really get as clear as possible on everything that one, where, where you wanna go and then all the components needed to get there uh, and then start talking to people to see if your idea makes sense and then start testing it. Um, if you don't have an idea yet and you're thinking, I don't know what I'm good at, um, I have all these ideas I wanna pursue and I don't know which one, so I'm paralyzed. Um, my recommendation would be to take self inventory steps and you have to sit down and start writing, you know, what are your values? What's important to you? What has somebody come and asked you a question for help? Like, has anyone asked you for help before? That might be something they look at you as an expert at or something, right? So there's, there's steps you could take to start assessing who you are. And, and once you put it on paper, like, here's what's important to me. Here's what a uh, problem I want to solve. And all these things start coming together and becoming more clear. So you might be... 
um, someone who is a surfer and you love uh, the environment. So you start coming up with ideas that are related to these skill sets that you have uh, and align to the values that you have. So now that's going to be a passionate line of work for you. Okay, so it was, yeah, so we're starting out with mapping it out, getting it as clear as possible. And that involves uh, just sitting down and writing down your, your goals and your values. They've done these studies actually that show that if you write, if you say down, if you say your goals, then you have a 4% chance of success. But if you write down your goals, you have a 44% chance of right. success. So better to sit down with a pen and paper and write them down rather than just to you know, think about it in your head as you're walking along along the street. Yeah, one hundred percent agree. One hundred percent agree. Yeah. So write down your goals. Now, when you said talk to people, who do you mean when you say talk? To, when you say people? When you're talking to, if there was one person that would be that would most appreciate and get value from whatever service or product you're offering, find where do they hang out and try to go talk to them. They call it getting out of the building. Um, you know, so if you are somebody that is in, wants to do a retail shop, you start going to talk to the people that buy, you know, women's clothing or so whatever it is, it's the end user of that product, the ideal person. Um, so you want to go and talk to them and get feedback. And if you have an audience already, obviously um, you can survey them and things like that. But live conversations are really powerful because you can get a lot more insight from people um, based on their experience, what they're looking for. And I will say it's not as easy as just going out and having a conversation. I think you need to do a little homework about how do you manage that conversation? What are the right kinds of questions to ask? Cause you can't just go out as they say and say, well, what do you want? You know, it just doesn't work. Otherwise you're never going to come up with the, they don't know the new idea or the new, the, the way you need to tweak something. Like I think it was, um, Ford who made a comment about that saying if I ask people what they want you know I would have made faster horse buggies versus like the car you know because they don't know about the car yet right <laughs> so you got to yeah. kind of work your way towards the right. need. like what are those needs and then it will spark and inspire your ideas so that's okay. what I mean by getting out and talking to people okay so so now we've and we've done that we've written down our values and what's important to you and now we're kind of formulating an idea we've got this idea now for a business we've got a kind of like a business model we've spoken to some entrepreneurs people we know we've listened to lots of podcasts we've read adam's book uh, adam's magazine app rather the change creator we've been inspired by other people who have started their businesses uh, around the world what what's the to the uninitiated, as someone who hasn't really started a business before, how do, what, what are the different steps from just starting a business to starting a business with, a, with you know, making sure that you've got social impact uh, coming in the future? Yeah, I mean, there's a number of models um, you can explore to adopt to an established business, or if you're starting, like you said, and you want to adopt those. I mean, you can look at Tom's Shoes, the buy one, get one model. Um, you know, you might be as simple as an accountant who does pro bono work for people that can't afford a good accountant. You know, there's, there's all kinds of ways to um, do social good with your business, and it doesn't necessarily have to be impacting you know an entire country it could be in small community it can be at large scale but I think the way you get towards that is when you do that self inventory you're gonna start finding work and ideas that are um, you know percolating based on your values and when you do that the business starts it just starts going in that direction because now you're making sure you're sticking towards what's important to you and when you write down your values usually you start getting into a well, part of that too is in a process that we have. So on our website, I have a startup guide, right? You know, it's one of those incentives. You can download it, but it goes through things too. Like, well, what frustrates you in the world? And there's just a number of questions and examples we give to start helping people figure out what category might make sense for them. Like there's so many direct directions you can actually take it. And again, so to, to me to figure out where you're going to answer your question, it is really in that exploratory phase up front of understanding who you are and what's important to you. And then if you can follow that purpose, do those things, you're going to, that's what the world needs. It needs people doing that. Follow what you're born to do. 
Um, so I think it's just discovered in those early phases. And I did the same thing. And I got to tell you, I, I agree with your, your point about writing things down and the value of that, because I've been, I, you think you know these things in your mind, like, well, I love, you know, rainforest and I'm going to do this and that, but man, it, you can spend a year of your life pursuing things. And then finally you go back and I just did it again. I, I revisit my vision and my business plan all the time now. And it just makes a huge difference. It gets more and more clear uh, as you go. So you may not know the answer right off the bat. You might have to say, here's who I am. Here's what's important. Um, here's how I have to plan my business model. And here's, so now you have a hypothesis. Okay. But you may end up pivot, plan to pivot because you're going to get feedback. You're going to find out maybe there's other things that are um, more important to you as you change yourself. Um, so it's a, I think it's an ongoing, evolving process. So I'm going to get you to uh, give me a hand here now. So I have two businesses. Let's do, we'll do one by one, okay? So <laughs> I have the 30-day no alcohol challenge which helps people reduce or quit alcohol. And I have- I saw something about alcohol on your whiteboard back there. <laughs> yeah, I was doing a, a, a live call with the members uh, on the phone on the, yeah. on the call a couple of days ago. Um, and then I have a company called, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Swanick Sleep, which helps people sleep better. So let's break down both of those just as an, an example and I'll get, I'd love to get your input. So 30 day no alcohol challenge uh, helps social drinkers reduce or quit alcohol people come into the program they uh, they learn how to quit drinking for 30 days that's enough for them to get a glimpse of what it feels like to go 30 days many people haven't gone you know one day in in their social lives or some people yeah. as long as they've gone in 20 years is like so two or three days they're not alcoholics they're just right social drinkers who've just developed this habit of drinking. And what, right. usually, what usually happens is that people who go through this challenge, they come out the other side having lost weight, having uh, sleeping better. Um, they improve their relationships with their children, with their husband, with their wife, their boss, their colleagues, their friends. They attract a higher quality or, or higher caliber of, of people into their lives. They find their, their dream romantic partner. They, um, they, they feel happier, they save a lot of money, and because they've got more clarity and focus, they make a lot of money. Okay. Go on into the life having much more fulfilled and, and much, much better lives most of the time. And, and I'm not saying that they have to quit drinking alcohol forever. I'm just saying quit for 30 days, and then afterwards people can go back to drinking, but may, most people who do my course, if they do go back to drinking, they do it at a far reduced rate than when they right, than what right. they were beforehand. So, so are these alcoholics or are these just everyday people who drink socially? It can be alcoholics, but 99% of who I work with are just everyday social drinkers, okay? okay. So who, who either know that they drink a little bit too much or they don't know that they drink a little bit too much. And right. then all of a sudden they realize that they've been drinking a little bit too much. So. I don't pretend to, to be able to, I don't pretend to be a doctor and I don't, I don't <laughs> and I'm not like, like here. I, in fact, my core demographic really is just the social drinker, what I would call a non-alcoholic okay. social drinker who drinks a little bit, who knows they drink a little bit too much and it makes them put on weight, it slows them down, et cetera. Yeah. So I've, been, I've had that program going now for, for a couple of years. It's been very successful. I've just released a book called the 30 day no alcohol challenge. And, um, yes. and uh, you know, it's, it's changing lives, it's transforming lives, it's impacting lives. So my question to you then is, how could I really turn this into uh, a worldwide movement to really set a goal of impacting hundreds of thousands or even a million people or have a goal to like have a million people take a 30 day no alcohol challenge? What could I do? What could I add to it? What, how could I amend the existing business to bring increased awareness? Would it mean putting, giving away like proceeds to a certain foundation? Could it mean setting up um, schools or foundation? Could it mean, I, I don't know, like, I'm, I'm asking you. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess it depends. You know, I don't know how you're you're building awareness currently, um, but you know, I think when it comes to scale, those are things that you really want to try to build in uh, to the model, right? So you mentioned a few things that could be helpful, but um, if you're thinking about, um, for example, like you said, so I don't know how much it costs to get the book or to go through the program. Um, they can donate to a cause of their choice. They can, um, you could do something where they're, you know, you're getting referrals. You know how they did the ice bucket challenge. Like mm -hmm. there could be a creative outlet like that. And for every video that is produced, maybe for every share or something, there could be a contribution made to, like to a donation or something. Mm -hmm. um, so stuff like that, I think for your model, like you don't have um, anything where you would do responsible sourcing and things like that. But I, it sounds like what you could do is, and I know the millennial generation um, specifically, um, support, they are really into supporting causes, um, like I mentioned earlier, and they will put money down for those things. So if you build it around that kind of um, idea, there could be more incentive to push the program. Um, so a campaign around that could be helpful. And then obviously some of the creative solutions to build scale in when it comes to referrals and challenging other people. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So for every, yeah, if I could do something, come up with something where it's for every time someone completes a challenge and holds up a sign that says I completed 30 days yeah. post it on their social media, my organization will donate $10 to, something but it kind of needs to be something associated with alcohol right but i also don't really want it to be associated with these places like alcoholics anonymous and 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 like I, I, because I want it to be really like a positive uplifting experience for people rather than like they come in and go, Oh, my life sucks because I drink too much. And you know, I'm a, I'm an alcoholic. I don't, I don't want it to don't make it about that. It's not about having a problem. It's about improving your life. Um, no matter how much you drink, maybe there's testimonials that people can share, uh, to state, you know, how, Hey, I drink, twice a week or whatever it might be. And I have a total of, I don't know, eight to 10 drinks in a week, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, but I just wanted to challenge myself. Just like uh, my wife and I, we have challenged ourselves to stop eating meat. And now it's been four years. <laughs> you know, it was just something we challenged, like a life change to see if we felt better. So maybe it's about exploring yourself, um, challenging yourself to do something different. And see how does it impact your lifestyle? Does it make a difference? If it does, can you share how you, how it changed your life? Mm. Okay, I'll have a, I'll have a continue to have a think about that. And if you're listening to this and you have an idea about wh who I could donate money to, that's not associated with like doom and gloom alcoholism, but is but is associated with positivity and making a change and transforming your life and feeling happier and and amazing, then please do reach out to me. Um, send me an email at james at jameswanick.com and I would love to hear from you if you have a suggestion. The second business I have, um, Adam, and uh, is Swanick Sleep. So I've created a company, a sleep company, uh, and our first product is a pair of blue light blocking glasses, which are called Swannies. Uh, they've been out for about a year now. Uh, and I have a goal. My, my brother and I, my brother, my youngest brother, Tristan, and I created the company and initially, it was just to see whether these blue light blocking glasses, which help you sleep, um, would be a great company. But now we realize a sleep company is really what we want to do. It's, so we're not a glasses company. We're, we're a sleep company. So we're going to be rolling out um, sleep supplements, um, mattresses, um, uh, pillow slips, sleeping masks, earplugs, uh, air diffuser, all these kind of great sleep products. And all done in a very, very healthy, sustainable way, all ma making sure that it's all best practices. Um, how, how, but, we, but again, at the moment, we don't, we don't really have a charitable aspect to the business as it stands at the moment. It's the first year. We've just got it up and going. We're, you know, we're getting, getting systems in place. How would we turn sleep or our business into a, a kind of movement that would really impact a million lives, not just making people sleep better, but making people sleep better and something. 
So you're asking me how you might scale that type of opportunity. Yeah. I'm just, you know, how can I, how can I put a social cause element to the, well, it to sounds like you have a social cause element. If you're sourcing everything from f sustainable um, resources, is that accurate? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. So I think that's a big talking point. Um, and it sounds like both of these things, the alcohol and the sleep are both health initiatives. They are. Um, so to your point, you know, the, the alcohol thing doesn't have to be about gloomy, like problematic stuff. It could just be about a process that is for, uh, and changing your life and improving it. Just like you need to sleep better to have more focus, more energy and those types of things. So maybe these types of things you can kind of, you know, think about growth hacking, uh, in the sense of leveraging other people's audiences, um, it could be charities or, I mean, look at what Ariana Huffington's doing with sleep, right? So um, I think there's outlets to maybe think about partnerships in those areas because um, that's the easiest way to scale up is use other people's audiences. Um, but as far as being sustainable, I think the storyline sticks around we use all, um, you know, appropriately uh, sourced products. Everything is built sustainably. Um, goes back to nature. Um, I mean, you can always tie in, um, I guess, the the donations and things like that. But uh, the younger generation loves the idea of sus a sustainable and responsible business. So I think that has to be at the forefront of your storyline. Mm, sustainable and responsible sourcing. Okay. Yeah. When you say the younger generation, what what demographic are you referring to there? Uh, Eighteen to thirty-four, but um, the Generation Z, which is twenty, I think I think it's under twenty. Mm -hmm. um, they are even more inclined to put these types of values first. Um, okay. so they're really, the younger they get, the more they are thinking this way, and I think it. You know, I love what Jason Silva talked about, which is becoming a billionaire today is about impacting a billion lives, not impact, not making a billion dollars. And he's saying that the, <laughs> the connectivity of the internet, right, the transparency of everything that's going on has allowed for people to expand their empathy further. And because of that, the younger generations who grow up in a technological age with lots of transparency, they have greater empathy towards what's going on around the world. So someone who has an existing business, let's just say someone has a business which doesn't impact social change. Someone sells, I don't know, steel, paper, clip, paper clips, or has an <laughs> Amazon business where they sell products that, uh, I don't know, whatever, lamps yeah. or uh, TVs or electronics or coffee tables, or they resell used mobile phones on the internet or on eBay or whatever, anyone, you know, making money because yeah. they're, they're entrepreneurial, they're, they're making money because, you know, they've got to get by and they want to run a business. How do they then with an existing business make, turn their business into one that is making social change into a mindful business? If they don't want to just throw it away and scrap it, <laughs> They'd like, to have, they'd, like to have a, they'd like to have a mindful <laughs> social element to their business. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, I think you just hit the key word, a social element, right? The business was not built on the premise of, you know, tackling, you know, women's rights or something very specific like hunger and poverty and these big issues. Um, but you could still address those things. So I think you have to revisit your business model. Remember, we talked about mapping out the business. So I think you have to take a minute and say, all right, here's my new goals, right? Here's my new vision. My vision is changing now. So now you write down what that vision is and you got to say, here's what I'm working with. Here's the old model. How do I tweak this model to now reach this new vision? And, and you're going to have to creatively figure out you know, what can I do? And it might be, you know, the simple things which we can easily come off the cuff are the, the donations or even like your alcohol thing. I mean, it doesn't have to be a donation to a, an alcohol related organization. What if you um, supported D light and their efforts to put a, a electric uh, solar electric in all these houses, meaning for everyone that does the challenge, um, it, it gives someone a light in their home, right? 
So like, that's cool. I'll, it's about doing the challenge now. It's not about just cutting out alcohol. It's just, I'll take on the challenge, right? Challenge accepted, right? Um, so I think you, for an established business, you have to revisit your business model and you're going to have to make some changes to pivot. And then you're going to have to figure out, okay, so if this is my objective, this is my vision, what, what can I do? And you're going to probably come up with a few ideas of how you might actually model it now to, depending on what's important to you, how to contribute to that, right? And then it can continue to evolve over time. But I mean, I couldn't give you a clear answer to say, this is what they'd have to do. I think every, every situation is going to be unique and they're going to have to write that down, put, it, put the new vision on paper and start thinking about how do you now get there? They figured out how to get where they are now, right? So they established the business, they figured out how to build it. And so they went through this process. Now they just have a different end game. And if the end game is changing, it's like the Google Maps is recalibrating and now we're going to a new destination and um, they're gonna come up with different solutions now. So it can always be done depending, and there's, there's a million ways that we haven't thought of and that we have thought of for people to do some type of contribution, small or big, but the idea being that they're doing something and using business as a tool because it's so powerful to help give other people a hand up. We're all doing good, but there's so many people out there that are not. Let's give them a hand up. You know what they say about surrounding yourself with people like, you know, it, it, it's kind of, I feel like a duty, right? A, 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 like a self like duty to, to, I can't sit here and just complain and go, dang, I can't believe how bad that is. Oh, look at all this. Look at all the deforestation. That sucks for them. How can I sit there and complain but not do anything? So, you know, depending on what's important to you, you recalibrate, you know, and you got to figure it out. But there's, there's always a way. There's always a way. All right. Well, Adam Force, thank you so much. I really appreciate you sharing your experience and your drive and your passion with my, uh, my audience. Where can we find out more about you and what you are doing? Yeah, sure. So website is changecreatormag.com. Um, we offer lots of free goodies, but also our primary um, offer is the, uh, the magazine, which is on Google and iTunes right now. And we have a lot of exciting stuff coming up in 2017 with Ariana Huffington, Tony Robbins, Guy Kawasaki, and a bunch of other guys. So keep an eye out. Uh, we're going to be telling some real powerful stories. Well, keep doing what you're doing, Adam. It's, it's, uh, it's tremendous. And, um, you know, you're making a living and you're making a difference, right? That's the main, <laughs> that's the main that's, point of this. That's the mission, man. That's the mission. And if any of uh, my listeners have been listening to this now and you have a suggestion on how I might be able to make my two businesses, the 30 Day No Alcohol Challenge, be more of a force for social good in the mainstream, or you have any ideas on how I can um, impact a million people's sleep um, by improving their sleep lives. And if, if, whether that be connecting me to uh, a charity, whether it be a, an idea about how I could donate a, a certain percentage of proceeds from every pair of blue light blocking glasses sold to a sleep foundation, or whether it be just like Adam suggested, maybe it's just I partner with another similar organization. And for every pair of Swanee sold, maybe the other company donates a light bulb to people Absolutely. who don't have light or they donate a gallon of water to, um, or, or, you know, they provide water for people who don't have water. Yeah. Those kind of um, synergies or those potential collaborations. I would love to hear from you. You can email me at james at james uh, or you can leave a message on my Facebook, uh, fa Facebook page, which is James Swanick official. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have a dream, and it's just percolating in your brain, put it down on paper, right? Write it down. Do what Adam said. Write it down on paper. Um, get clear as possible. Talk to people who would get the most value. Ask the right questions. Write down your values and what is important to you. And if you do that enough, then the idea will come to you. And if you have the idea and you already know what it is, well, let me tell you something. You're as young as you're ever going to be in this moment. <laughs> So just do it. And now you're five seconds older from when yeah. I did that. Tick, 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 tick. All right. So just do it. You only, yeah. We've only got one guaranteed life in this world. So absolutely, make the most of it. Adam Force, thank you so much, Matt. I really appreciate your time. This has been terrific. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And to the listener and to the viewer, 
Thank you for listening and watching. We'll catch you on the next time. See ya.